everyone! It's teacher Nina here from SK Putrajaya Person 181. So today we are going to learn measurement. It is under the physical science theme for science year 3. Are you ready? Now let's get your textbook ready and open to page 79. Yes, on page 79, this is the stimulus page for the topic measurement. Let's read it. During the last school holidays, Lang Yi and his sister helped their father to work on his ornamental fish enclosures. Ornamental fish enclosures, do you know what they are? Ornamental fish are fish that are not for consumption. It is only for um, placing in the aquarium. That's why we call them ornamental. Enclosures are these things here. Okay. Father, why are these enclosures different in size? These large enclosure can be filled with more fish. Oh, no wonder this small enclosure has lesser fish. How is the size of the enclosure measured? So this is what we are going to learn under this topic. Are you ready? Let's go! As a guideline for this topic, we are going to learn two measurements. The first one is area and the second one is volume. For area, we will learn how to measure the area of a regular surface and also irregular surface. Whereas for volume, we are going to learn how to measure the volume of solid and also liquid. And for solid, we will be measuring hollow box and also irregular shaped volume. Okay, for today's lesson, we will be focusing on the measurement of area for regular surface. Are you ready, boys and girls? Great! Now, area. Look at your textbook, page 80. What do you see now? Wow, this football field is bigger than my school's football field, father. Hmm. When we say something is bigger, or the opposite, smaller, we are actually talking about size. Yes, size. Usually we say something is small or big. Or if it's not so small or not so big, we call it maybe medium sized. But how do we measure size? Aha! Uh -huh. So area is the measurement of size. The size of a place or surface is called area. Area is measured using a measuring tool. Measuring tool, remember that, and is expressed in a suitable unit. Let us look at the objects below and their units of measurement. In year 2, we have learned about length, where we can use a ruler or a measuring tape and also we can use parts of our body to measure. And now for area, we need to use that skill to measure something, to measure the length of an object to get the area. Okay. Now, let's look at the first example, this book. The area of this book 
can be expressed in square centimeter or written as cm2 so how do we mention this square centimeter now this is a mat a mat is of course larger than a book so we can say that the area of a mat can be expressed in square meter m2 square meter and look at this globe and this tip of the borneo here this is the state of Sabah so the area of the state of Sabah can be expressed in square kilometer km2 square kilometer okay everyone now look at these three examples given down here what is the suitable unit for the area of these objects okay the first object is a leaf yes so which unit is most suitable yes you're right square centimeter what about this tennis court aha uh -huh, you're right square meter and this is the blue lake right hmm I would say we can use square meter too. What do you think? Okay, everyone, now let's turn to the next page of your textbook, page 81. Now, we are going to measure the area of regular surfaces. Okay? The area of a regular surface of an object can be measured using a paper square or graph paper. And now we shall use a paper square. What is it? We'll see. Okay, now how do we measure the area of this card? Look at the yellow card that this girl is holding. The length of this yellow card is 3 centimeters and the width is 2 centimeters. So how big is this card, you would say? How big it is, is measured by its area. So now I am going to teach you how we can measure the area of this yellow card using a one square centimeter size paper squares okay this red square is one centimeter long and one centimeter wide okay so one centimeter long and one centimeter wide is the same as one square centimeter now, do you have any idea what are we going to do with this square paper to measure the area of this yellow card? Let me show you. Okay, I am going to enlarge this figure, the yellow card. Okay, the measurement is the same, 3 cm long and 2 cm wide. And now I have a one centimeter long and one centimeter wide square cards. Okay, I have plenty of them. So what I am going to show you is how we can measure the area of this yellow card. Okay by using this small 
red cards. It's very easy. Are you ready? Ah, see, we are just going to arrange the square cards onto the yellow card. One, two, three, four, five, six. Aha! Uh -huh. So we can say that the area of the surface is six square centimeters as six one square centimeter paper squares are needed to fill the area of the card. So do you get it? We are supposed to count how many red cards to use to cover the whole area of this yellow card. So that is how we measure the area of a surface. Okay? Do you understand? Great! Now, I have something for you to think about. Look at these figures carefully. There's A, B, and C. As you can see, hmm, the sizes are different. But my question is, which one is the smallest? Which one? Do you think A is the smallest? Or is it B? Or maybe C? Hmm. But obviously C looks so much bigger than B. But they are hollow here. That means there are nothing here. Ah, this is hard if we haven't learned about how to measure area. Okay, if you look at C, the measurement given inside this hollow square is 1 meter by 1 meter. So this whole thing is using the unit of meter. Hmm. So how are we going to measure the area of A, B, and C? Oh yes, we are going to need a one square meter of paper squares. Yes. Now, what do we do with it? Just like before, we arrange these purple squares. Let's start. Let's count how many purple squares will fit into A. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, six square meter for A. Now, what about B? Do you think it will be more or less? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, and six. What? A and B are the same? They have the same area? Oh my, I think all this while I have been fooled. Hmm. Thank God we just learned about area. Ah, now what about C? We need higher order thinking skill to measure the area of C. Why? Because there are hollow boxes here. Ah, how to do it? If we are to arrange these purple squares onto C, well, I just don't get it. How would you do it? 
Yes, it's very easy. Just arrange it as usual and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And what do we do now? We just minus these two boxes, the white boxes. That means how many white boxes can you see? Two. So eight minus two. Ah, uh, wait, it's also six. Oh, wow. So that means A, B, and C have the same area. All of them are six square meters. Oh, my. Ha. <sighs> okay, now let's turn to page 82. There's an activity for you to do. Okay. Now I am going to disregard the center part of this page because what I need you to do is I want you to do this in your science journal. Can you do that? I need you to draw this A, B, C and D inside your science journal. Measure the length and the width correctly using your ruler. And then you can prepare one centimeter by one centimeter paper squares. You can use different colors or you can just use one colored paper. Or I would suggest to make it easier, you can use graph paper. What is a graph paper? Ha ha! Do ask your mom or dad. Okay everyone, I really hope you can answer this. Just measure the area for A, B, C and D. And then answer these two questions below. Can you do that? I believe you can. Okay, everyone, all the best. And I hope to see you in our next lesson. Goodbye.